Good morning and welcome to this lesson which is on nanochemistry. So get the title down and we will get started. What do these items have in common? Well, plasters, tennis rackets and sunscreen all contain nanoparticles. The plasters contain silver nanoparticles and sun cream often contains titanium dioxide nanoparticles. And there's a range of different nanoparticles that can be found in tennis rackets. Nanoparticles often have properties that enhance those products. Are nanoparticles a good thing or a bad thing? Well, here are some headlines for and against. I'd like you to say whether you think each of them is for or against. Pause the video for a moment while you do that. Okay, so our first headline, self-cleaning technology makes washing easy, is for. Tighter controls needed for tiny science. Well, that one is going to be against. Safety worries over tiny particles in cosmetics is against. Cheap nanoscience can provide clean water is for. Tiny robots will turn everything into grey goo is against, unless you're a big fan of grey goo. And nanotechnology kills cancer cells, well, that's got to be for. But what are these nanoparticles? What is nanotechnology? Well, nanotechnology is the study and use of nanoparticles, and those are extremely small substances. The word nano comes from the Greek word meaning dwarf. One nanometer is about 0 0.000, 000, 000, 0.000001 000 meter, or 10 to the power of minus 9 meters, which is a millionth of a millimeter. Now, nanotechnology is not a new idea. Nanoparticles have been used for, by people for thousands of years. The Egyptians used ink containing nanoparticles of a black pigment. Lead sulfide nanoparticles were used by Romans to dye their hair black. And nanoparticles of gold and silver have also been used since about the 10th century to colour ceramics and stained glass. There are also natural nano nanoparticles. Insects and lizards stick to walls because of the nanostructures on their feet. Spider's webs are super strong nanofibers. Butterflies' wings contain little shiny reflective nanocrystals, which make them so beautifully colourful. Chloroplasts in plant cells are like nanofactories that harness the sun's energy to make glucose. And nanotechnology scientists try to copy these natural nanoparticles to make new and useful materials. The first idea of nanotechnology came in 1959 by an American physicist called Richard Feynman, who was awesome. He offered a thousand pound sorry a thousand dollar prize for the first working motor that was less than one sixty fourth of an inch across, so smaller than the head of a pin. It was only a year for Bill McClellan to be able to achieve that. Um, he was a scientist that worked in California. Okay, and scientists have been making structures smaller and smaller ever since, and we, that's what we now call nanotechnology. The word was first used in nineteen seventy four by Nario Taniguchi, who was a Japanese material scientist. As scientists have managed to make things smaller, they've needed new equipment to help them. So in 1981, a device called the Scanning Tunneling Microscope, or STM, was invented that allows, allows scientists to see the nano world. You can see things at the scale of atoms. Okay, so we can see individual atoms and even move them around using the STM. In 1989, an STM was used to move 35 xenon atoms onto a tiny piece of nickel, and you can see that in the photo. The atoms spelled the name of the company that the scientists worked for. I'm pretty sure you can tell who, what that was called. Forces have different effects on nanoparticles because they're so small. So if you're a nanoparticle and you were trying to walk to a pool, then the air particles would bump into you and knock you all over the place. Swimming would be like going in treacle because there's so much more friction. It's, so, it's much, much harder for a tiny particle to walk, move through water molecules. And nanoparticles are so small that gravity will have very little effect on them. So if you try to jump into the pool, you may well not end up where you thought you would. The interaction of nanoparticles with light is also different from large scale particles. So normally gold metal appears gold in colour. Um, but nanoparticles of gold, if we put them in solution, look red or blue in colour. And the different sizes of the nanoparticles of gold give different coloured solutions. 
you can see in the photo. The smaller ones give the red solution and the larger ones appear blue. Okay, so nanoparticles have more atoms and molecules near the surface than larger particles. Okay, so that means in reactions, nanoparticles are able to react more quickly um, because more atoms can be in contact with the reactant than in a larger particle. So we have a high surface area to volume ratio. Okay, and that's really useful for substances like catalysts, um, which need to be in contact with the reactants to speed up the reaction. Okay, so here are some statements. I'd like you to decide whether they are true or false. Pause the video for a moment while you decide. Okay, statement one. In one meter, there are a million nanometers is true. Nanoparticles exist in nature, also true. Nanoparticles are smaller than atoms is false. Microscopes exist that can show us single atoms, true. Nanoparticles are much more affected by friction than we are, is true. And microscopes exist that can show us inside atoms, is false. Okay, so nanoparticles are already used in various ways. For example, sunscreen contains nanoparticles of zinc oxide and titanium oxide, which absorb the UV rays from the sun that could cause skin cancer. The particles are so small that they're invisible on the skin. Before we had these nanoparticles, we had we still used the oxides, but they were big enough to be seen, so your skin looked white, which wasn't a great look on the beach. Plasters and bandages can contain nanocrystals of silver, because silver is toxic to bacteria. And it can be woven into socks as well to kill the bacteria that make that smelly foot smell. Nanoparticles can also be used to help keep things clean. You can get fabrics with nano coatings that repel and resist stains forming on them. So instead of the stain going into the substance, the spillage gets trapped on the surface. Right, have a go at matching these up. Pause the video while you do that. Okay, so a bottom-up process is when nanoparticles build up atom by atom. Top-down is when small-scale versions of machines cut and shape nano-sized particles, and that means self-assembly is when atoms and molecules put themselves together. Okay, so there are loads of future possible uses in medicine. Nano-coatings on hip and joint replacements will help prevent rejection. Nano-electronic implants in the retinas of blind people communicate with the cells and make those people able to see again. Nanocapsules of drugs could be used to can target cancer cells, so the drugs are only going to the cells you want them to kill. Nano scaffold might be able to support the growth of new skin and body tissue to help with healing processes. And nano sensors inside your clothes or inside your bodies could run health checks on you or deliver medicine to you if needed. Other future uses include nanoscale microchips, so making smaller electrical devices. Nanoscale solar, solar cells to trap solar energy, basically replicating what's going on in photosynthesis. Nano-sized containers could be used for storing hydrogen to be used as a fuel, and paints and glues containing nanoparticles will be lighter, stronger, and need less solvents. You can also use them for composites. 